Hello everyone. We will start our first talk now with uh, Mr. Chian Sahin. We will present you exploring large amounts of weather da forecast data through open source software. Sahin, please. Hello. Uh, you can hear me? Yeah. Uh, hi, my name is Jian. Uh, I work at ECMWF. Uh, my presentation for the next 20 minutes is about exploring large amounts of weather forecast data through open source software. So I'll uh, introduce ECMWF a bit and then I will walk through what we've done uh, to modernize our uh, main web-based uh, interactive visualization system called EC Charts and what uh, uh, steps we've taken uh, to achieve that. So who are we? ECMWF is the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasts. Uh, it's a research institute. Uh, we develop uh, weather forecast models, but it's also a 24-7 operational service provider. So the, uh, the data that we generate out of our model uh, four times a day has been uh, uh, is given out to our member states, to cooperating states and the broader community uh, for, so that they can use our raw data uh, to integrate into their downstream processing and then issue the forecast you see on the TV uh, or on your telephones, for example. Uh, we also operate one of the largest spare computer facility uh, because we need that to be able to do the uh, uh, weather model uh, forecast output on a timely manner. And we also operate the, one of the largest meteorological data archive in the world. At the moment we keep around 300 petabytes of data uh, in our archival system. Uh, we are based in Reading for the time being in United Kingdom. This is our core facility, but we also operate two services from the EU's Copernicus program, and one of them being the monitoring service of the atmosphere, uh, that's called the CAMP service, and also Copernicus climate change uh, service, which is C3S. Uh, we also contribute to Copernicus Emergency Management Service, uh, which is uh, by, uh, by the Flood Awareness Program. Uh, that's called EFAS. I am part of the web services team uh, uh, at ECMWF. What we do is that, okay, we generate this uh, data and we push to our customers, but we also have some applications, uh, web-based uh, applications and services that our uh, customers can access to data immediately through the web uh, uh, standard web interfaces. So we have a, a processing computation visualization system, uh, an interactive system on the web that I will uh, talk in detail later. Uh, we have some web APIs to download the data uh, by using standard API tools. We have lots of, lots of graphical products that we generate every day on an operational manner. And we provide other web-based services uh, based on the OGC uh, services like WMS. So this talk is mainly about the uh, web-based visualization application we uh, provide to our customers, and this is called EC Charts, and our efforts to modernize it uh, by using the open source software. So these are some uh, screenshots from our inter uh, EC Charts interface. As you see, there is very colorful, pretty pictures. So what exactly is ECHS? Uh, it's a web-based application to inspect and visualize on the ECMWF data, uh, plus the Copernicus services uh, from the atmospheric monitoring data. So we also provide all our layers and data through the uh, WMS, the, the graphical uh, products. It gives an immediate access to, to the maps, uh, which is very important in the meteorological uh, community especially in the uh, weather forecast. It has interactive features that the users can zoom, pan, click, extract data information uh, in the interface. It has user-controlled visualization because users can generate their own products by combining uh, layers out of 250 layers we offer. And they can design a product and then save this product for uh, use, uh, to use it later, basically. Uh, we have customizable uh, parameters as well. ECMWF runs operational model that we call the high resolution model, but we also generate a probabilistic forecasts. So we run the same model 50 times every day, twice a day, 
and out of those 50 forecasts, which is slightly lower resolution, the users can generate probabilistic forecasts. So they can generate, for example, the 2 meter temperature probability, 2 meter temperature being more than 10 uh, degrees or less than 0 degrees. They can do all those custom uh, generated products out of it. So the interface can do 2D global maps. So we only work on the global level. So all our data are global and they can, they can see any uh, forecast data all around the world. And they can also do uh, point-based post-process data in terms of the time series. So they can click anywhere on the world and they can see time series uh, uh, of, the, of those probabilistic forecast data. So we have the standard OGC WMS service available as well. And we also offer to our customers that are using our interface uh, to be able to compare uh, different versions of the model, which is uh, very useful for them too. So it tries to do a lot. Uh, so this is a screenshot uh, of the application. We have a maximized uh, area of the, of, the, of the data, the layers. The users can access to their own products uh, through the menu. We have uh, different projections. Uh, polar stratigraphic projection is very popular in the meteorological field. So that's kind of compulsory to, to have it in any meteorological interface. Uh, we have lots of data inspection tools where the users can click and read the data or extract the data of this point. Uh, we have an interface for for the layers, as I mentioned, we have like 250 different layers, uh, <coughs> and then they can combine all those layers, apply different styles, different color schemes. They can apply those uh, computations, for example, in the probabilistic forecast, so they can generate all those uh, custom uh, uh, maps as they like. And very important in the meteorological community is the time dimension. We have a, a navigation of the time dimension uh, at the bottom of the interface where the users can navigate to any valid time of the, uh, of the forecast by using this, including the animation as well. So just before going uh, into detail what we've done uh, through the modernization of our software, uh, is to give you some information about our infrastructure. We, we run in-house a uh, cluster of uh, 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 computers to, to host all those services. We have a data store that we call the data layer, and we store grid fields because our model generates automatically grid fields. The grid is the format in the meteorological world, which is governed by the World Meteorological Organization. Uh, we have spatial databases for time series data, so we basically take all these uh, uh, meteorological fields and then uh, transform them into, uh, in, into time dimensions so that they can be generated uh, very quickly. We keep all the metadata in MongoDB. Uh, then we have the compute nodes, uh, which we do all the work. Number crunching business is happening there. It's what we call the service layer. So we host uh, and develop microservices, mostly written in Python uh, and managed by the salary workers. Uh, that includes to retrieve the data, compute whatever is needed from the user's requirements. Uh, and then we use ECMWF's own uh, processing tool, which is called EC Codes, uh, to do that. And then we, at the end of the uh, workflow, we generate plots, and again, we use the ECMWF's magic software to generate the plots. So the backend uh, on the uh, server side is, uh, is Django. So Django runs those workflows. Uh, that is whatever is needed to be done uh, on, the, on the service layer. Uh, we use RabbitMQ uh, to orchestrate all the work. Uh, and we use memcached for the caching uh, on the server side. So all this information, uh, metadata that is needed to be able to generate any layer, let's say the uh, temperature, uh, uh, we keep them as JSON files uh, in a database and we use again MongoDB to do that, uh, which is very, very nice. And the user interfaces in the application is JavaScript, uh, mainly jQuery.
So if you look at our infrastructure, actually we use uh, on the service side all open source uh, software, which we are very happy. But our main problem was uh, on the user interface, because it's all basic uh, JavaScript. All the GIS kind of information, we've done it at house uh, at the time we developed it, and it uh, poses many issues. That brings me to the uh, justification for the modernization of the, of the code. The first version of the EC charts has been written about 10 years ago. So all the zooming, panning, and GIS related code, we've done it ourselves. Uh, and in this 10 years time, our data for a given field, the resolution of the data grew in the, in the order of the, uh, as a factor of 10. And because our data is quite big actually, and then the frequency to update the data is very often, that's twice a day, we have to do most of the things on demand. And with the resolution increase in the, in the data, of course everything is slower compared to 10 years ago. So growing data size plus the time constraints we have, we have only one hour to prepare the data, uh, even less than one hour to prepare whatever is needed, uh, like the seeding or caching of the data. Uh, and this is not enough to prepare them. So we had to do all the processing on demand. <clears throat> and also like the probabilistic, probabilistic forecast that needs to be done uh, from the input from the user. So it's completely customizable, meaning that we can't really cache or prepare anything, even if we had the time. So those two things, the speed because of the growing resolution uh, of our data and also the maintainability because we have all this GIS related uh, code written by, by ourselves uh, are the main two reasons that we had to uh, modernize our software. A bit more information on our meteorological data. Uh, so I mentioned earlier that we have around 250 layers and each layer has a time dimension uh, similar to this one. So on the, on the rows you see the dates, those are the forecast base time, so when the forecast is made basically, and as columns you see the forecast valid time, so when the forecast is valid. So that's, uh, each of those uh, little squares is uh, representing a data set for a given layer. So we have 250 of those similar pictures in terms of the data sets. And even more challenging is that each of those rows are updated twice a day. So every day we, we have two new rows of those 250 layers arriving. So it's the the challenge we face in the meteorological forecasting community is slightly different than the GIS community, I guess, because our data is not maybe as high resolution as the GIS, standard GIS data, but is uh, updated very uh, quickly, so that's twice a day. So it gives us very, very little time to do anything in advance. And of course, our uh, first approach 10 years ago to make sure that we always show the relevant data was that we always generated uh, the maps as single tiles. So, for example, here, here is an example of the workflow, what we do to generate a map, is that we've received a, let's say, request, 600, uh, 1600 by 900 pixel, temperature probability and precipitation. And this is what we need to do in our backend. We had to retrieve the data for those two different layers. We had to do the computation based on, uh, based on the input from the user because they might be asking whatever uh, probability they, they would like to see. And then we do the plotting. So for each layer, we do generate a, a map and then we render them together. So we basically smash them together to generate a final PNG and then we serve this one. So that, 10 years ago, that was working fine when the data sizes were manageable, but it's very slow at the moment because, you know, the, because of the, uh, uh, the resolution increase. 
And also the interface, if you change the image size or zoom level or bounding box, then we do the plotting part again. The other parts are done on global level, so retrieval of the data or computation is applied to, to the data for the whole globe, so they are cached uh, in the first request. But the plots has to be done again and again, because we, we don't have tiling concept. And also we are always as fast as the slowest layer we display. So if you have an expensive layer that requires lots of data to be retrieved and then computed, then that will be relatively slower than the other layers. And then because we have to wait for the rendering to generate the final image, that will be uh, the speed that our interface was able to uh, uh, produce. So to attack to those two issues, speed and maintainability, uh, we knew that we had to employ the tiling. But it poses lots of issues with the meteorological data. Uh, that I will show a bit later. So we wanted to implement the tiling so that we can use the caching much more efficiently. Uh, and also the smaller image sizes means that the, each image, each tile will be generated much faster. And it also gives much smoother pan and zoom operations as well. So looking at the interface of ECHS, we all only wanted to change uh, the map generation part of it, all the other parts of the user interface, our customers were happy, so we didn't touch it. So all the effort was to replace our uh, existing uh, map uh, handling with the open source software. So we, after some studies about a year ago, we decided to use open layers to do that. Uh, uh, and then start from the open layers from the client side and make the relevant changes on the back end because we, we had to do lots of changes at the back end to accommodate the tiling as well. So we replaced the custom client software with open layers. Open layers in our case is great. It delivers many of the features that we were after. Uh, it provides a tile management which is essential in our case. Uh, it can be extensible, so we can override the functions and uh, change the behavior as we, uh, as our requirements uh, suggest. Uh, it gives a very easy handling of the projections, which is again essential for us. Uh, it handles different sources, uh, map sources. WMS is our uh, primary source. We use our own WMS server to serve our data. So, which, which was fine. Then we have some vector tiles as well, and some raster images as well. So, OpenAS is great uh, to handle all those things. <coughs> the the usability is very nice, uh, and there's a great uh, community support as well. Okay. So, all those changes on the client side. Uh, uh, posing some issues for us is the main issue was the synchronization of the tiles because if you are serving uh, single images maybe you don't need to do much about the tiles but when you are generating the tiles on demand and they all come on different times uh, because they all need different amount of processing needed then the synchronization of tiles are essential in our case otherwise you can show a mixture of different uh, tiles from different time steps, uh, which is very wrong in our case. So we put a lot of effort to synchronize the tiles. Uh, and also we do a lot of animations. Our users uh, like animations and they like to step over the uh, time dimension, meaning that we need to also synchronize the tiles uh, per time as well as, uh, 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 as well as the layer as well. So that was the main uh, uh, effort that we had to put to, to be able to make the tiling business work for us, especially for uh, tiles that are generated on demand. So the backend improvements because of this uh, tiling approach uh, was slightly different. We had to change some of the WMS specifications to fit our needs, uh, kind of extending, uh, especially handling the time dimension. And we had to do some kind of preceding of the tiles. 
so that we can give our users a better user experience. And to do that, what we did essentially is that whenever a user displays a chart, which is a mixture of several layers uh, in our case, uh, which each of layers containing many tiles, in the back end we get this information, whatever they are uh, seeing, and then we generate the next five times steps of those layers for all those tiles, which worked very nice for us because uh, by doing this, because our users spend a bit of time looking at uh, the information on the map, and by the time they would like to move on the time dimension to the next step or the step after, those ties are already ready and they are cached. So that uh, that was a nice approach uh, from our point uh, at the back end. Then we had another problem with the caching system that we are using, which is Memcached. It's a very nice tool, very fast and efficient. But because of the way we change, uh, uh, instead of generating single tiles, now we generate many tiles. Uh, that these uh, tiles need to be synchronized again on the server side as well. Because we do all those retrieving data and computation operations on a global uh, level. So when you have 15 of the same uh, layer, 15 different tiles arriving there, is actually asking to the backend to do the same job 15 times. So we realize very soon, uh, very quickly, that we are crashing the system by just simply asking a few time steps. So we had to implement a kind of a locking system. So when we, uh, uh, when we get all those tile requests, the first one generates a lock while doing the job. In this case, for example, retrieving the data. And other tiles, they just wait and keeps asking to the memcached, is this data ready or not? Uh, and then as soon as it's ready, they progress as the other tiles. And then the computation is done by the same tile for but some other tile, doesn't really matter, which is creating a lock again uh, for this step. And then the others uh, wait uh, until the computation is done as well. And then each uh, tile do their uh, own plotting because that's the only difference uh, compared to each tile for a given layer. So to sum up, uh, we ended up now as the better version of uh, EC chars, uh, which we are very happy because it's feeling much faster and smoother compared to the previous version. Uh, we have very positive experience working with open layers. Uh, it was a very nice experience for us. Uh, so we managed to make the application faster, but we also got rid of our own GIS-related code. Instead, we now use open layers, for example, on the client side, which is great, so we can do uh, updates uh, much quicker than we used to, be, we used to do. Uh, and now we are getting some feedback from our users, better users, uh, uh, positive feedback as well. But the work is not finished yet. We still need to uh, migrate to OpenLayer 6. Uh, that will happen uh, after the end of this year, I believe. Uh, we have other applications as well, so we can uh, apply the same approach to those other applications too. Uh, we should start proceeding of the popular layers. We have only very limited time, but we can still do a bit of proceeding uh, uh, at the back end. Uh, we would like to implement the caching on the server side by using map proxy. Uh, and then we also experimented some uh, client side processing, like those probabilities I was mentioning earlier, whether we can do that on the client side uh, rather than going back to the server. So that's it. Uh, we also have an opening uh, to support our EFAS, the flood awareness system uh, project. We are looking for a full stack web developer to work with us. Uh, it's not closing on the 2nd of September. It's been extended now to the 16th of September. So if, you, if one of you is interested, please uh, apply. Uh, so you can use ECMWF website to find the uh, <coughs> job opening. Okay, thank you. Is that time away? Thank you very much, Jan. An interesting uh, presentation. We still have time for one or two questions before you move to another talk. So if you have any questions, please. Uh, 
<coughs> it looks very nice. Um, is there any plans to open source the software you made? So, sorry? Um, uh, do you have any plans to open source the code that you've been developing? Okay, no, I, I can't hear it very well. To open source the code, like to share the code? Um, ECMWF shares most of his code, including the EC, uh, EC codes, which is processing the grip data, or Magix, which is doing the plotting. The ECHS is kind of binding into the infrastructure. So there were some talks in the past, but I don't know at the moment what will be the... But we have no problem to share it, because that's how ECMWF normally works. Thank you. Very interesting presentation. Um, you've been talking about uh, OGC web services um, that, well, you're using through your interface. But uh, do you share or do you plan to make them accessible to to other For parties? Data. Yes, to other applications. Uh, well, we have uh, ECMWF has some public data. Uh, at the moment, and these are already available in WMS that could be used by other applications. The COMS data, the at atmospheric monitoring service data from the WMS is also available for any public user. Uh, for other data, the real forecast data, you need to have the access to the data in the first place. So you need to register and go through the process so that you have the access to our data. Uh, then you can start in. Uh, you can start using the WMS service uh, as part of your application, for example. But there is also lots of talk at the moment about the open data. So this is the direction ECMWF is going as well. So as soon as there will be progress on this side, eventually, I guess ECMWF data, including all the services, will be open at some stage in the future. Hi, you mentioned uh, use of uh, web map service. I'm just wondering, the, are you using any uh, tools for, for like open source tools, or did you build the WMS yourself? And we built the WMS ourselves. That's again almost 10 years old. So I think ECMWF was one of the pioneers of the uh, WMS implementation in the metrological world. Uh, we, we just built it ourselves. We don't use any tools at the moment. Yeah. Okay, Specifications. Last question. Uh, thanks. Uh, are most of the layer the layers available in EC charts? Are those uh, global coverage, or does that limit to to Europe? Uh, everything is global, so that's part of our issues as well. Because we can do processing much faster on the global level, and then once they are done, uh, they are available for all, all the other users. But we need to synchronize those processings at the back end. Uh, so everything is globally available, all the fields. Yeah. Thank you very much. You can still uh, address him some question <laughs> in the lobby if you want, or drop by their booth as well. Yeah, we have a. There. By the way, we have a booth uh, uh, in the in the main area. In the expo area, the first floor in the in theater. the first floor. Yeah, it's Copernicus. This ECMWF uh, is running some of the Copernicus services. You can also find the uh, job ad job advertisement over there if you are interested in. Thank you very much. You're welcome.